Yo, 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 what's up? Welcome back. I am your host of this solo episode of the number one real estate podcast, the RE agent podcast in the entire world. I'm your host, Coach Vikram Diol. Today, we are going to talk about something juicy, and it's why do prospects not show up to your appointments, aka they book an appointment with you, but they don't show up to the appointment. Why do prospects go? So I had a client that I've been working with for about 45 days, and he's like, I make all these phone calls, Vic. I follow the script. I do the things you say, but he doesn't do one thing. He hasn't fixed his tonality. He gets on the phone and he's just kind of moping around, right? His hair's all crazy. Fine, that's his look, but he's just not into it. And do you think that your prospect knows when you're into it or not into it? Of course they do. They might not consciously know, but subconsciously you are triggering them to put up their walls or you become combative with them, which is just as bad. And you start arguing with them about why they need to book an appointment with you because you're going to help them find their dream home. And you force them into an appointment because they just want to get you off the phone and then they don't show up to the appointment. So there's a few reasons why that happens. One is you're causing them to raise their guard. You are causing sales resistance. You are causing by the words you use or the tonality. And it's typically more the tone than the words, right? If you say something with the right tone, the right gestures, even if they can't see you, you're still moving around, right? I don't know where you're listening to the podcast. Maybe you're checking this out on YouTube, but I move around, right? My knees pop up and down. Like maybe that's why my knees always hurt. Cause I'm always like dancing as I talk. You got to move your body. You got to move your diaphragm. You got to stand up and talk with your prospects. If your computer doesn't allow you to stand up, figure it out. Y'all go get some you, you all have real estate books, I'm sure. Or maybe just the older real estate agents. Maybe some of you newer ones don't have it, but you got books in your house. Stack your computer up. Buy extra cords. Buy extra monitors. Do whatever it takes, right? If you can't afford a stand-up desk or you can't get one in time, get your computer at a level where you can see it eye to eye. Until you become really good at creating the energy sitting down, you should make all your prospect calls standing. Now, when you call your prospect, you should be like, Hey, how you doing? That'll trigger resistance. If you call somebody and you're like, Hey, how you doing? I'm just making my calls, even though I'm going to follow the script and I'm going to say everything I'm supposed to ring, ring. Hi, Susan, Susan Jones. Hey, it's just Vikram from the real estate sales Academy, right? Nobody wants to work with you if you're too excited, right? Think about the the overly excited puppy that kind of pees everywhere. Or think about like the person who just has zero energy. Both of those people are people you probably don't really want to work with. So if you wouldn't work with yourself, why would you expect somebody in the real world to show up to your appointments? It's kind of ludicrous. It's kind of egotistical. It's kind of ridiculous. And I know that most of you have not been taught how to actually sell. You've been taught that you need to build rapport, right? You need to go out there and you find, find a commonality, right? Try to see if they've been on a vacation lately and, and then say that you've been to the same place. Try to see if like maybe they like sports and you like the same team and you guys can talk about sports. I'll tell you, I did a presentation with a, with a person of years ago. This guy had a beautiful watch on it. I think it was a, uh, I think it was a Patak, right? A beautiful watch on it. And, uh, you could just tell he had money. I knew he had dough. I knew his family. I'd done deals with them. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go build some rapport. And we started talking about watches and cars. And this dude has a whole slew of watches and an even bigger collection of cars. And we got to chatting and chatting. And this guy liked me. I mean, he really, really, really liked me. Guess what? We never got to the trust part of the conversation. He like talking about his cars and his collection and showing his pictures and his planes, his watch collection, right? Because it wasn't stored in his home. He had no problem sharing all of that, right? He trusted that we weren't criminals. He trusted we weren't going to break into his home. He trusted us in that respect, but he didn't trust us with the transaction. 
Why? Because I didn't build trust in the transaction. I built rapport. So he liked me. I knew him. He knew me. He knew my hobbies. He knew I was into watches and cars and fine clothes and drinking good wine and things like that. But he didn't utilize me to purchase or to transact on the home. Why? Because he didn't trust us. Because I broke the process and I went off on all these tangents because I was referred to him. I thought we were in like Flynn and we didn't build the trust. You guys, people need to trust you before they're going to really care about doing business with you. They might know you, they might like you, they might talk to you, but if you don't build that ever important piece of trust, they will not transact with you and they will not do business with you. And if you think that you can't build trust with somebody in a short period of time, you are mistaken. The way you build trust with your prospect, and I'm going to hammer this and hammer this and hammer this, is you make it always about them. Do they need to buy a house? Do they want to buy a house? And do they want to do it with you? Right? If they don't need to buy a house and they don't, or they don't want to buy a house, even if they want to do it with you in the future, you don't have a prospect. You have a person who is a potential future client, which is not invaluable. You need those in your life, but that's probably a person you push off to the sidelines and you can have a normal conversation with them and then get off the phone and call somebody who actually wants to buy a house, needs to buy a house, wants to sell their house, needs to sell their house, All right? Stop chasing the person that doesn't want to do business with you. I have a guy who's been calling me up for six years, seven years, such a nice guy. Like I have a hard time saying no to him. Finally, last call, I was like, bro, you are better served spending this 30 minutes. Cause I will talk to you if I'm bored. I will talk to you if I'm walking, I have your number saved. I'll talk to you. Like I'll pick up the phone if I'm not doing anything and I'll talk to you and I will waste your time. He's like, no, nah, Vic, there's no such thing as a wasted prospect call. I was like, yes, there is Tony. Yes, there is. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, Tony, you think about how many times you've called me. He's like, well, I got a log right here. I was like, how many conversations have we've had? We've had like 15 conversations. Each conversation, it's, I'm bored. I'm driving. I'm doing nothing, killing some time, making food, right? Sometimes I'm using the restroom, just doing mindless things. And I said, take each one of those calls. It's like, all right. I said, there's like 15 of them or something. It's crazy. 20 of them. Over the course of the last six or seven years, maybe even long, yeah, seven years, I said, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And I've told you I'm never going to transact. I told you I haven't lived in the state for five years and that I would not do business in the state anymore. There's no reason for me to do business in the state anymore. And I would find somebody who works at a company that's a fiduciary, not for a big box brand. And I said, if you move to a big box, if you get out of the big box and you move to a company where you're a fiduciary and you're not selling just their products, blah, 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 maybe we'll do business. But until then I ain't right. And if you tell you move out of Seattle, I ain't. And he kept calling me, kept calling me. And I just talked to him, talked to him, talked to him. How many hours did this man waste talking to me where he could have been looking for people that actually would do business with him? I told him we wouldn't do business ever. And he's called me and we've spent hours on the phone over the last few years. Y'all, why are you kicking people's tires that don't want to do business with you? I have prospects that call me and say, Vic, I've made 900 calls in the last three or four, five months, 900 conversations. I made countless numbers of calls. I said, yeah, but what do these people actually want? Do they need to buy a house? Do they want to buy a house? Do they need to sell their house? Do they want to sell their house? If they need and want, it's an easy conversation. If you have to convince people, it's a harder conversation. You are going to get into a combative sales mode. Now, can you help bring education and motivation to a prospect? Absolutely. When a shifting market like we have right now, our interest rates going to go up, our interest rates going to go down. Is that going to be good for the housing market? Is that going to be bad for the housing market? If interest rates go down and prices go up, that's good for sellers, bad for buyers. You should know these things. You guys should know that on a half million dollar purchase with 20% down, if rates go from 6.7 down to 5.7, the difference in payments, a couple hundred dollars. And there's programs out there with the lenders that will actually get the payments pretty dang close. If you work with the right people, right? They can do buy downs. 
There are so many things that can be done out there if you know the market. You know how many prospects I deal with that don't even educate their clients on this stuff? They come in and I'm like, all right, so when somebody tells you that interest rates are too high, what do you say? They're like, well, we say, yeah, they are a little high. I say, then what do you say? Well, we don't really have anything to say. And then what does a prospect say? Well, they always say the same thing. We're waiting for interest rates to come down. Cool. What number do you need? Like, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, that's awesome. What number do you need the interest rates to be at? Right? What number do you need the interest rates to be at in order for you to be a buyer? And you know what all the prospects say? 90, 95% of them tell me, I don't know because we don't ask the question. Well, I bet you if you ask that question to a buyer, they would also say, I don't know because nobody's ever asked them that. People just say interest rates are too high compared to what? Compared to three years ago. Do you think we're going to be back in the prices of three years ago? We don't know, but it could happen, but it could also go up to 10%. As much as it could go to 3%, right? It can also go to 10%. And I would bet my money that we're going to go to 10 a lot faster than we're going to go to three. So wouldn't you rather lock in a house today when there's a lot more uncertainty and you can get a good deal? Wouldn't you rather lock in a house today when you don't have multiple offers on the table? Wouldn't you rather lock in a house today? And if the rates do come down, prices go up, you get the equity and you could possibly maybe potentially refinance the home. But if you don't know how to say that in the right tone, the right pace, the right speed, right, the right way at the right time, guess what? You will trigger the prospect to think you're salesy and they're going to hang up on you. This is what we teach inside the Real Estate Sales Academy. This is how we are winning. This is how my clients are still writing offers. This is how the market works. It's always shifting with 3% interest. I had people saying it was too high. At 4%, I had people saying it was too high. Five years ago, six years ago in Seattle, where I sold real estate, people said the prices were too high. And they kept going up, and they kept going up, and they kept going up, and they kept going up. The last thing I'm going to share with you is you need to record your calls. If you are not recording your calls, now maybe you can't record them, you don't have a dialer, you don't have a proper CRM, right? You should have those, but let's say you don't, you don't understand technology, you can't afford one, whatever it is, you don't want to set one up, whatever it is, grab your cell phone, right? Or grab your iPad or grab something and just record the conversation. Just record how you sound, right? And then listen to the conversation. My sales team, they have to listen to 10 calls of theirs a week. That's a KPI of theirs. They have to listen to 10 calls per week that they make. That's a bare minimum, right? That's two calls a day. Why? Because if they don't do it, they don't know what they sound like. They don't know how the prospect responds because what you think you sound like and what you really sound like, two different things, two different things. Today, I was reviewing videos with my video team, right? Now, we've been making videos for a really long time, so we're in a different place than a lot of you that haven't been making videos. But today, I'm like, dude, we got, yes, we've missed a couple of weeks. We got to review 20, 30 videos. We got to write our copy. And as I was reviewing the videos, I was like, hey, these are really shitty. And they're like, well, we didn't want to tell you this, Vic. I'm like, Whenever you record these, like these are like kind of old videos. I'm like, I need to bust out some more content. They're like, yeah, these are old. These are like when you're Vic 1.0, when we just started working together. Like they're long, they're unorganized. You know, we chopped them up. I'm like, hey guys, take this part. Boom, boom, boom. Right. So we're able to make them work. We're not throwing them away. We're still utilizing them. But those still created money for me. Those still created brand for me. People still love them. They're just long and wordy and unnecessary. Like for a podcast, sure. A little bit longer, no problem. Some long form video on YouTube, sure, no problem. But short content, right? I was like, guys, we got to get this better. They're like, yeah, we know you can dial this in, Vic. But this is after years and years and years and years. But guess what? We still reviewed. We still review. We still review. We review our calls. We review our sales calls. We review our videos. We review everything. And it's just something you put in your calendar. It's something you time block for. It's not a chore. It actually helps you slow down to speed up. Right. As the Marines say, slow is smooth, smooth is steady, steady is fast, fast do win. Anyways, if you guys like this episode of the RE Agent Podcast, the number one real estate agent podcast in the world, and you want to learn more about me, Coach Vikram, go to my Instagram, Coach Vikram, or TikTok, Coach Vikram. Follow me, show me some love. If you're not following me on YouTube, Vikram Deal is the tag. I'd love to see you there. We've got much more content that goes out there. You guys, I appreciate you so much. And I will see you guys on the next episode.